Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of the War on 2 series. In this video we will be working on the Nevermore Max 2 air filter for my War on 2.4. You might have seen the previous Nevermore Max build on the channel before, uh, way back before I moved here, so that was like uh, maybe two years ago or well, actually, I think it was three years ago, whatever. Uh, this is a successor to that, and uh, it comes with a bunch of improvements. You can print this on a 300mm bed, for example. It has a bunch of air quality monitoring stuff with SCP-30s or 40s and BME-280s. I'll talk more about those later in the video. And uh, yeah, it has a bunch of quality of life improvements, and I, I think it looks nicer too. And uh, you don't need as much acrylic, which is also a plus, I guess, but I already had the Nevermore Max, so... Eh, I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to build this for a while and I actually started working on this back in uh, October 2022. So what you're seeing right now was actually recorded in October 2022. So yeah, this project has been in the works for a really long time. Uh, but yeah, today... Uh, in this video we will be finishing it and testing it so and another reason for the delay was the custom pcbs i made for this project which i will cover later in the video and uh, you can see all the printed parts on the table here but there are also a bunch of parts you don't see on the table so those sensors and the pcbs are some of them also you need like these really weird expensive screws that you need for this which aren't on the table so yeah, this, again, as when I started recording this, they weren't delivered yet, and again, this was a, a long time ago. Today, though, one thing worth mentioning is there is also a Nevermore Stealth Max, which is more easily printable with less warping, so today, if you're building this from scratch, you really should look into the Stealth Max as well, but as I said, I started this video a year ago, the Stealth Max didn't exist at the time, but uh, functionally, both filters are pretty much equivalent, so yeah, it might be worth going down the Stealth Max path, but in terms of its filtering capacity and things like that, it'll be the same, so yeah, if you want to see this printer in action and see it being built and see it filtering and actually seeing the numbers when this is working, then uh, this video I think is still relevant. So, so yeah, this was a pretty long intro, so let's start building it. The Nevermore Max is almost fully assembled, so yeah, here it is. This panel is normally hinged, I'm just... I just removed the screws holding the hinge in place just to make this a bit easier and you know there's a protective film here so that's a transparent acrylic panel but yeah this is the main assembled filter and I'll show you the back side as well uh, this is the active carbon basket as I said this holds about a gold bag worth of active carbon and uh, you can see the white stuff in these cutouts those are the HEPA filters and this is the central HEP that has a NeoPixel LED ring in it I think the intention is to eventually turn that into a status indicator. I don't know if the intention is to make it a progress bar or just a color status indicator. I don't know if any of the software work is even being worked on right now, but at least that's an idea. At least uh, it will tell you when it is time to replace the active carbon. I think that's part of the goal. I'm going to remove the active carbon from here just to make this a bit easier. So this is the hub. This doesn't have the fan in it. The fan is in the back side. So this panel is normally screwed in place obviously but i removed it just to be able to show you how this works so the fan normally sits in here and the fan is screwed onto the back panel which i didn't print it with enough top layers so you can see the infill whatever uh, and uh, yeah this is the rear side of the nevermore max air filter as you can see there is quite a bit going on here so i thought i should probably explain how this is supposed to work First of all, the airflow direction is reversed with the Nevermore Max V2 versus V1. So the air gets pulled in through these cutouts, which uh, these thing, this, this thing sits on top normally and just uh, directs air into the uh, printer because this is supposed to mount on the side panel of a Boron 2.4. But I have more to say on that in a second. So this just makes sure that there is no uh, like air coming out of here, doesn't go back in and whatnot. But Anyway, uh, I'm not going to use that, I'll explain that in a bit. Normal, in a normal setup and in my setup, the air gets pulled in through these holes, goes through this chamber area, I'll explain what these are in a second, goes into the orange side chamber, which is just for directing the airflow. From there, the air exits through these HEPA filters and then the active carbon basket into the central hub, which doesn't have the fan here, but it has the fan in here. And that fan is the only fan that's doing this airflow circulation. Um, so the air gets pushed through here, passes through these things, I'll explain them in a bit, and back into the printer chamber. So that's how this is supposed to work. 
Uh, you can also see that this is uh, sealed with a lot of RTV gunk, so RTV silicon. So yeah, that is another important part of this and you can see the uh, rubber foam uh, seal stuff on the uh, chamber dividers as well. So uh, the point is to minimize the air that escapes these chambers and escapes the filter as well. So every single chamber is uh, sealed as well as I can. And uh, these side chambers are also sealed with RTV in my case. You can use O-ring if you prefer, but the top panel, I did use O-ring. I didn't use O-ring on the side panel, uh, side chambers because, well, this one you will be able to see with the acrylic panel in place. The side ones, you, don't, you won't be able to see them because those are opaque, just uh, ABS instead of transparent acrylic. And it's a different size of rubber O-ring anyway, so I'd have to source that too. So yeah, there are already enough parts in this that I just didn't want to go through all that. So um, yeah, that's how this robot figure works. And yeah, it kind of looks like a robot to me. So eyes, mouth, body, arms, legs, balls. <laughs> so yeah, that's how this works. Now these things, these are, um, air quality monitoring stuff so I have two SGP30s and two BME uh, BME something 280 I think maybe something like that SGP30 uh, measures Vox SGP40 does something similar as well but it's not quite as good as that it just does an estimate thing but yeah uh, it's for uh, the SGP ones are for uh, monitoring Vox so uh, the reason you have two is so you can compare the input SCP-30 to the output SCP-30 and using that you can figure out whether the air filter is working or not. If the input air is, well, isn't getting clean when it's outputting the filter, then uh, your filter, filter material isn't working well enough and it's time to replace them. So uh, yeah, that's one of the nice features of the uh, Nevermore Max V2. The BME 280 measures temperature and humidity. I guess you can compare them input and output as well. I don't really know what the purpose of that is, but yeah, it has two slots for those. So I populated both of those as well. They're cheap enough if you buy the cheap Chinese modules anyway. This part uh, is where you hang the electronics from the balls of the robot. Uh, there you can normally have a Raspberry Pi Pico, but uh, in my case, I'm, I have a custom PCB I designed that's on a custom mount as well because the PCB so the Z height is very limited in here so this is what I'm I've been working on behind the scenes a custom PCB for the Nevermore Max V2 so the point of this is uh, just to make the wiring a lot easier and add more functionality if I'm not mistaken with the stock electronic setup there is no fan control with this you will have fan control extra fan channels and you know it will make the wiring easier as well just plug in the sensors to this the NeoPixel to this just connect it to connect this with a USB-C cable and here will be a JST-XH uh, for the power for the fan and yeah that's it so this is supposed to make electronics a lot easier and should add more functionality so this is what I've been working on behind the scenes and uh, I'll talk more about this later in the video uh, and uh, yeah as I said the rear panel sits here this is screwed in with these, uh, I think I showed a picture of this earlier in the video, these fancy screws that are not that easy to source. I found these from China for a lot less than the, uh, I think McMaster doesn't have these, but I think uh, Misumi has these. It's a, lo a lot cheaper than Misumi pricing, but still not that cheap uh, compared to a regular screw at least, at least. So yeah, this panel is screwed in place with those. And then those, a lot of those screws go into these self-tapped uh, holes on the frame of the Nevermore Max V2. I'm not a big fan of that, uh, especially because these self-tapped holes, as you can see, aren't even a perfect circle. So you're only self-tapping into half of that and it's very easy to strip, but I do understand why it's designed like that. It's just to, you know, have the lowest profile possible here, but yeah, it's, I'm not, it's not ideal. But anyway, in my case, there's another challenge, and that is how I'm supposed to mount this. So with a with a normal Voron uh, two, you can see that this panel is sticking uh, beyond the that this there's a lip sticking beyond the end of the frame, and that sits on top of the rear panel of a Voron two, and uh, this part, the air duct, is also there. So this uh, 
this you, you replace the exhaust filter basically with this and uh, screw it in. These are just thumbnails I'm using to protect the table. These aren't part of the design. Uh, you screw it in using these screws and uh, this thing sits here as I said and just directs the air. That's all fine but uh, that doesn't work with a doom style panel and it especially doesn't work in my case because I have a I want to mount this on the top panel so uh, I'll have to design a bunch of custom parts for this one of them is already printed as and already here so this lip that's it's here what this does is it uh, basically gets rid of the lip here and just raises the uh, it just makes the rear of the uh, never more max the same height as that lip and uh, yeah that's basically it but you can see that this also the spacer also is wider than the uh, frame here so what it does it, is it also keeps the rear panel in place as I said I managed to strip a lot of these self tapped holes so with this in between and resting against the flat panel uh, yeah, it'll keep the rear panel in place that's the idea and this will screw it in screw in place with these two screws as well I'll also populate the rest of these screw holes too but a lot of those are already stripped as I said but yeah these two screws are mentioned because you can see the two threaded inserts here and here so that will keep the spacer in place and the spacer when it's resting against a flat aluminium panel it will keep the rear panel of the Nermor Max in place so yeah uh, that's the design for that uh, I still have to figure out how to mount this on my Voron 2.4 top panel though so here is the top panel of my Voron 2.4 Doom Cube this is a 3mm thick aluminium sheet that I designed a long time ago and yeah replacing this is a pain in the ass so I didn't want to replace this but the problem is these cutouts were designed for the Nevermore Max V1 and not even the stock Nevermore Max V1, my Nevermore Max V1 which is different from the stock one in terms of where the holes are. Well, not too different but different enough. So yeah, uh, the problem as you saw was the uh, uh, intake and exhaust of the Nevermore Max V2 is at the tops which would either sit here or here and wouldn't line up with these holes. So I designed a custom part for that, this thing. So. Yeah, it just redirects the air from these cutouts uh, to here where it meets with the Nevermore Max V2, like so. And then in the Nevermore Max V2, uh, the air goes back here. For example, if we follow the path on this side, the air comes in through, in through here, goes all the way to the middle here, gets sucked into the back chamber of the Nevermore Max V2, goes all the way to the side here goes through the side panel into the top panel of the uh, Nevermore Max V2, passes through the filters, goes through the fan in the center, goes uh, and then you know goes into the back panel of the Nevermore Max V2 and then uh, goes to the this side of the Nevermore Max V2, passes through that into the air duct thing and then back into the chamber. So it's a really restrictive air path, but this is what I could do if I don't want to replace the panel, which I don't. So yeah, it is what it is. So I printed this part already and you will see this later in the video. So uh, the last recording you saw in this video was... Actually, I don't know how long ago that was, but the first recording in this video was recorded about a year ago. So technically this video has been in the works for about a year, but finally I'm able to continue working on this. The main delay was this custom PCB. I'm working... I was working on a custom controller PCB for the Nevermore Max and you know, that is now ready. And I'll talk more about that in a second. There are also these new custom PCBs mounted here and here. These are the same PCB, just uh, slightly different colors. Uh, these have an SGP40 and a BME280, and those are for you know, air quality sensing. You can use off-the-shelf AliExpress modules if you want, uh, but I didn't have the greatest luck with those, so I decided to design my own, which is what I did, and I'll show those uh, close up in a sec too. So. Yeah, those were the main two delays and especially this one was the bad one. This controller PCB took uh, five prototypes and yeah, many, many months as a result. And uh, yeah, spent way too much time and money on that to be honest. But uh, you know, once you start working on that, you do want to finish it. So yeah, anyway, this is the current and final version of the Nevermore Max 2 PCB. This initially started as a PCB that was running an RP2040 as its MCU and uh, the mounting system was fairly similar though it didn't have these 45 uh, degree angle corners but it still had the same uh, bottle opener uh, mount for mounting it. 
the second with the second revision I added these uh, corners and at the same time I made this piece a bit smaller but uh, both the first and the second version again they were running an RP2040 as it's MCU and Clipper doesn't really like RP2040s and yeah I had a lot of problems and in the end I decided to not use an RP2040 so instead I switched to an STM32 F103 MCU for the third prototype uh, the problem was <laughs> Clipper another Clipper thing even though the MCU itself has two I I2C I buses, STM32 F103 that is, uh, Clipper only use, uh, is able to use only one of them and you do need two I2C buses for uh, two, two sets of sensors so even though the hardware was there, software didn't support it so I couldn't use the STM32 F103 version so I switched to an STM32 G0B1 MCU which, with the fourth prototype which is also what's on here and yeah, that one finally worked so uh, yeah uh, again cost hundreds of dollars took many many months to develop especially back then because i wasn't placing as many orders for pcbs as i am these days since i these days i also sell pcbs but i didn't do that back then so yeah uh, it took a really long time but yeah the fourth prototype pretty much everything worked one problem was uh, i just messed up and uh, connected two pins of the mcu to a uh, for the I squared C, one of the I squared C headers here, connected it to a different uh, set of pins on the MCU. Basically, I forgot to switch it from the STM32 F103's pins to STM32 G0B1's pins. So, yeah, that's why I needed a fifth prototype. And once I verified that, once I fixed that and verified it was working, uh, yeah, this is the final version. This is also now released on GitHub. It's also available on my Etsy store. And, um, Pretty soon, I think, pretty sure I'm also going to open a Shopify store pretty soon too. But uh, anyway, if you're building an uh, Nevermore Max 2, uh, this PCB, uh, I think it's a pretty good PCB. So, uh, as far as its features go, it has a 4 pin fan header here. So, this gives you real 4 pin PWM fan control, which is what uh, uh, GPU fan or the Sanyo fan I'm using. This thing. Uh, that's what they prefer, that's why they have four pins, so power, ground, RPM monitoring and uh, PWM signal. So yeah, this also can monitor the RPM from the fan and all that is connected uh, through this connector here. These two connectors are for the I2C buses, so yeah, you connect the uh, uh, SGP40 and BME2 ADs uh, to these connectors. If you're using my uh, custom PCB then you know, one, uh, one is for the air intake and one is for the air exhaust, but yeah, it depends on how you have things wired, but yeah, you have two I2C buses, which is uh, enough. You also have a NeoPixel control here with 5 volt and ground being the other two pins here. And you also have a 3-pin fan header here. And the 3-pin fan is optional, you don't need to use it, but uh, yeah, it's there if you want it. And uh, that has... that. The way this controls the fan is pretty similar to how most 3D printing printer controllers control uh, fans we connect. So just PWMing the ground, that's how they work. So yeah, the third pin is for RPM monitoring, but the control is on the ground here. So if you want a three pin fan, that's also available here. This four pin input is for the power input, uh, two, two grounds, one uh, uh, power for the three pin fan and another one for the four pin fan. And uh, the USB-C connector here is for the data, obviously. So that's the custom PCB here. This runs Clipper, not uh, Sana Hamel, if I'm remembering correctly, not his uh, controller software that runs on a Raspberry Pi Pico W. This runs Clipper, and Clipper does support almost everything you have on the on here, except SGP40s. And SGP40, you can just uh, there's a you can add the code for that uh, to Clipper and make it work. There there's a guide for that on the Nevermore Max repo. So yeah, this thing runs Clipper and just communicates over USB. This is not compatible with Stealth Maxes. I am working on a different Stealth Max PCB, but I'll uh, talk more about that once that's finalized. So yeah, that's uh, mounted here. As for the PCBs that are here, that's uh, this tiny PCB. There we go. So. Yeah, it's this PCB. It has an SGP40 here and a BME280 here, and 3.3 uh, volt, 3 .3 volt ground clock and data for the I2C. 
and uh, yeah as you can see this is a pretty tiny PCB this is also available uh, on my Etsy store and soon on Amazon too and this is also open source so you can find this on its own github repository which is linked in the description below but um, yeah this is designed for Nevermore since we on Nevermore's both on Nevermore Max and on Stealth Max typically you you use an SCP 40 and BME 280 so uh, yeah this makes things a lot easier having both sensors on the same PCB means you need two less PCBs and two less PCBs to wire so it makes wiring easier I also source this from genuine uh, like authorized retailers for these sensors so you know unlike Aliexpress sensors uh, where it may or may not work this one uh, will work and the reason I did that is exactly that for that reason I bought some SCB40s and BME280s from an Aliexpress seller and uh, yeah, I only ordered two and one SCB40 and one BME280 so one of each didn't work so yeah uh, that's why I decided to design that PCB and as I said if you're interested in that there's a link in the description below anyway uh, so they're all mounted here and uh, we can finally continue working on the uh, Nevermore Max 2 but uh, quickly I should mention that this video, when I started recording this video and when I started uh, building this Nevermore Max, Nevermore Stealth Max didn't exist. So I started with the Nevermore Max and Nevermore Max and Stealth Max are pretty comparable in terms of their features, like they should have the exact same feature set. Nevermore Stealth Max is easier to print and I think it's going to replace the Nevermore Max in the future. So if you're just starting building a Nevermore max or stealth max filter just go with the stealth max i think because yeah it's easier to print and i'm pretty sure the most of the development focus is going on uh, going into stealth max not max but yeah uh, there's nothing no, uh, wrong with nevermore maxes either so yeah i just wanted to point that out uh, stealth max is probably the way to go these days but yeah anyway i'll both I guess I'll link both Max and Stealth Max in the description below in case you're interested in them. Anyway, uh, let's close this up and uh, mount this on the printer. But before that, let me just show you some of the changes I made on the printer because there were some things I did between the episodes. Again, it's been about a year or so. So uh, yeah, let me quickly show you the things I did on the Warron 2 and then we'll continue working on this by mounting this on the Warron 2. First of all, the most obvious one, if you uh, remember the previous video, which was over a year ago, so who knows, but uh, if you do remember it, these uh, skirt flanges were grey, now I've reprinted them in orange, since the tool head is now also orange. I just wanted to ma ma match the color of this to the tool head and also uh, reprinted this thing for the display as well but I still need to print the top skirts which I didn't do yet and that's because I have some uh, I, I want to design something different than I originally designed but that will take a bit of time so that's not going to be in this video but I also did reprint the bottom skirts they uh, looked horrible before uh, they were printed pretty badly so fix that and you might also remember the LED strip on the top in the previous video you might remember that was hanging from the top so one side was hanging by a string the other side the side close to here was hanging by the wires of the LED strips again not recommended obviously but that's what I did but uh, now as you can see they are actually mounted in place so I designed and 3d printed some uh, mounts I'll show them on the computer so you can see them a bit better so it's a pretty simple mount you can see it in here the LED strip just snaps in here and then this piece just uh, sits inside the screw holes of my top inner flanges. I also designed this webcam mount here. I don't know if I showed that in the recorded video or not but uh, it's the same idea. Just two screws that go through the original holes and two more screws that uh, that are for the filament I think. His uh, C920 webcam mount this thing. I don't have the 3D model for that. I, I don't have a like a real CAD model of this. So this is converted from uh, from the STL. So not ideal, but uh, I, I got it close enough. So these two holes are for uh, just threaded inserts and two holes that go through these uh, inner top inner flanges or whatever I call these. 
previously that webcam was mounted to the extrusion directly and I didn't have these two uh, pieces mounted so just a few polishing touches basically. But there are still some missing pieces I still need, uh, need to fix. For example the side panels. I have a piece that keeps the side panel pushed uh, inwards and I need to print that because those side panels have a tendency of just popping out so yeah I have to use duct tape for that currently so that's one thing I need to print and uh, to the top skirts but those will be in the next video or some other video this video is for the Nevermore Max so just wanted to cover this since you will be seeing this as I uh, mount this uh, Nevermore Max on here and here it is mounted on my Waron 2 350 Doom Cube and yeah it's the 350 spec and Doom Cube so you can see how big this thing is but yeah, that's great because it means it will hold a lot of active carbon which is uh you know perfect i won't have to replace the active carbon as often so uh here yeah, anyway i tested everything that's connected to the pcb everything is working out and i'll show them in main sale in a bit later in the video you can see the neopixel ring here that's pretty much all i can show in this clip because you know for the rest i need screen recording but yeah again everything is uh, working the idea with the NeoPixel ring is I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like a progress bar indi indicator thing so you can, you know, you can get an idea about how much uh, life you have left on the active carbon or at least change the color based on the status, like whether it's actually working or not. But uh, for that sort of thing you need um, uh, you need macros, they don't exist yet. They're, the automatic fan control one doesn't even exist, let alone that LED indicator. So I'm not sure about that NeoPixel LED control, like actually using that as a progress bar, but you can get the regular NeoPixel LED control and automatic fan control using the Nevermore controller code here. But uh, this runs on a Raspberry Pi Pico W and it communicates with your Clipper running Raspberry Pi with over Bluetooth, not over a USB cable. Uh, if you are running a Raspberry Pi Pico W, this, sh uh, this code can do all that stuff, but uh, in theory, you should be able to do all this stuff in Clipper as well. You just need a bunch of macros. So I will be working on those behind the scenes for my Nevermore Max controller and eventually my Nevermore Stealth Max controller too. And uh, yeah, that way uh, it will communicate over USB or with the Stealth Max, I'm also considering adding CAN bus to make that wiring a bit easier. I just don't like wireless communication because you know, you're adding something that can go wrong into the mix when you don't have to, when you can easily run a wire, so... Anyway, uh, if you are running a Raspberry Pi Pico, the software can do it too, so I'll link it in the description below. But uh, again, just to be clear, this doesn't work with my Nevermore Max controller PCB. This is a different software for uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W. And uh, you have to do all your wiring inside the Nevermore Max or Self Max manually. And here are the sensors from the Nevermore Max 2 air filter. You can see the BME input and output, so temperature, pressure and humidity. I wish there were indicators for what these are instead of just you know, just showing the numbers because at least with these you get the units but down here for the SCP40s yeah the temperature is actually just directly from the BME so that's not even the SCP and then the rest well uh, you can I guess guess the humidity here because it has the percent symbol but these two numbers you have no idea what these are so anyway that's just a code thing so someone could work on that behind the scenes and improve it but uh, yeah, you get the raw uh, data in here, and then this is the index. So with the SCP40s, you don't actually get a real measurement. You'd need something much bigger than SCP40 for that. But I do plan to make a video about something like that pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. It will be like a whole room air quality monitoring thing. But anyway, uh, with these, yeah, you just get an index, which is calculated. And as you can see, the input has... Uh, higher index than the output anyway if we actually turn on the filter fan here so i'll just set it to 100 percent and uh, you should see the rpm climb up here there we go the filter turned on i'm not in the same room so i'm not able to visually show that to you but yeah i'm, I'm sure it is turned on because you can see the rpm here and i did test it of course it is working just fine uh the auxiliary fan i didn't connect because there isn't anything to connect there anyway uh we should see the SCP input index climb and as you can see it is climbing really fast. It was in the 60s, now it's 300 something. So yeah, as the fan is turning, obviously it's pulling the dirty air from inside the chamber into the 
uh, filter and yeah it is passing through the stb40 and yeah obviously the index is climbing and uh, stuff will run through the filters and it will get exhausted and actually you can see that the walk index is going down not up with the output sensor if i had to guess it's probably the like because the air was tail in there it was probably just air rising from the chamber into the filter because the fan wasn't running at the time now the fan is running it's pushing the air that uh, is pushed through the filter material into the chamber and as a result the exhaust air is actually cleaner than before so that, if i had to guess that's why the book index is going down here so as you can see uh, this whole thing is working uh, the reason you have all these sensors is obviously uh, uh, this lets you know if the filter material is working well or not so if there isn't a huge gap between the input air walk index and the output air walk index or the raw data whatever you use to compare i'm not sure probably the index then you know that the filter material needs replacing may need the active carbon so yeah that lets you do that in theory that can also let you uh, control the fan just you know compare the walk indexes between the two sensors and set the fan speed based on that and then you can also control that through software to set the LED ring color on the Nevermore so that you have a visual indication of the fact that you have to replace the filter material but yeah none of that is set up in Clipper and code so uh, that's all you can do currently but you need macros for that and as I said I will be working on that behind the scenes those clips were recorded out of order anyway just want to quickly mention that the Nevermore Max PCB I showed and the Nevermore Sensor PCB I showed are both open source and available on GitHub so if you're interested in these uh, they will be linked in the description below uh, currently my Etsy store there are some stuff I'm working on so you won't be able to buy this from me but uh, you can order from XR Bunker in the US so Shami sells the Max PCB this yeah this one the Nevermore control the Nevermore sensor PCB I have it on eBay right now and I'm also working on Amazon and um, yeah this one uh, should be available from uh, more vendors pretty soon too so by the time you see this video there may be more links in the github repository so if you're interested in these either one of these the link in the description below. Obviously, the sensor PCB will work with Stealth Maxes too. So, if you're building a Stealth Max and a Max 2, uh, this one should work just fine. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like down below and thanks for watching.